Hey devs, we're back again and today I want to talk some more about Kotlin. Now in a previous video, I talked about how to set up an Android Studio project that supports Kotlin. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to set up an IntelliJ project that supports Kotlin. And with this project, you'll be able to write a simple hello world function and then from that export a jar that you can then run from the command line or import into other systems where you would otherwise run your Java code. Okay, so first things first, we need to set up a new IntelliJ project with Kotlin support. To start off, we're gonna open up IntelliJ. And once it's open, we're gonna select Create New Project. On the left-hand side, you'll see that there are Kotlin project type, as well as a Java project type with a Kotlin option. In our case, we'll simplify things by just selecting Kotlin type, Kotlin slash JVM. We're gonna give our name of Hello Kotlin World, and then we'll select Finish. That'll create our new empty Kotlin project in IntelliJ. If we expand the project pane, we'll notice that the source directory is empty. If we right click on source, go to new Kotlin file or class. We're going to select Kotlin file, name it main. Okay, now we have our project set up. Let's write a simple hello Kotlin function. Now we have a new main.kt file. Within that file, we're going to go ahead and create our main function. We'll call it main with argument type of an array of strings. Within the function body, we'll print out hello Kotlin. With this particular signature, the IDE will then automatically recognize that this can be run. So if we click on the Kotlin icon, it'll automatically run that and we'll see hello Kotlin output in the console at the bottom of the screen. All right, we have our function set up. Let's look at how we can configure our build artifacts within IntelliJ so that we can generate the desired jar file, which we can then run elsewhere. Next, we wanna configure the build artifact for the project. Open up the project structure window, navigate to artifacts, click the plus sign, and navigate to jar for modules with dependencies. We then need to select the class that the main function is located in. Now, if you're saying to yourself, wait a second, we didn't create a class. You are definitely correct. But when we create a function in Kotlin, underneath the hood, it appears as if it belongs to a class with the same name as the file with KT appended to the end. So here, when we go to select main class, we see that we can select main KT as the class name. Once that's selected, we can click apply and hit okay. Next, we go to the Build tab at the top, select Build Artifacts, and choose the Build action. You'll see at the bottom it does a little work. Now our jar should be available to run. So if we open up a terminal, type java-jar, and then specify the path to the jar that we specified when we configured the Build Artifact, we can execute the jar, and in our case we see Hello World printed to the console. And that's it. We now have an executable jar that we can run from the command line or that we can integrate into other projects, whether those be server-side applications, backend services, whatever we want. From here, we can start to explore the wider world of what's possible using Kotlin. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you found this useful, leave a comment down below, share on social media. I'd love to continue the conversation and talk more about where you're using Kotlin and what type of projects you're building with it. Until next time, everybody.